Welcome to using XBRL Sheet in Excel. This is the follow-on video to introducing XBRL Sheet. In the last video, we basically looked at how we could get hold of this sheet. Uh, also, I talked a little bit about tokens. And the token I copied in the last video, I'm going to basically put over here. So in cell A1, um, I'll come back to tokens uh, a little bit later on. For those of you who are familiar with XBRL to Excel, who have used it before, this sheet uh, should seem very familiar to you um, because it's exactly the same sheet as gets downloaded when you select companies on the website. So the first sheet is the model sheet, which is driven by data in the standard sheet, and at the back we have all the filing sheets, which basically contain the XBRL downloaded data. You probably noticed that the first sheet is actually devoid of data, that's because I've actually deleted it. Normally there would be data in it when you first download it, but I wanted to show you the effect of running a web query. So if we right click on anywhere in the um, data range, the external data range, we will see there is an option to refresh the data. Uh, but before we do that, we ought to pay attention to the fact that we have a security warning. When you first open the spreadsheet, because you're trying to get hold of some external data, you will probably get a security uh, warning, which you can disable with uh, by clicking on options. So you can say, I want to enable this content. Or you can just ignore it and just deal with the message when you actually try and refresh the data. So, for example, if I click on Refresh now, we get the security warning. Um, we just say, yes, we want to proceed. So we click on OK, and basically it goes off to get the data. If we go down here, we will see that this little globe is whirring, indicating that it's gone off to the internet to actually download the data. And here it is. And yes, it's exactly the same data that gets downloaded if you were to download uh, data directly from the XBRL to Excel web application. Now when we refresh the data, that was just for the data in this particular tab, but we can get all of the data refreshed at the same time. If we go up to the data ribbon and we click on the refresh all, then each of the filings will be downloaded and so you get a complete set of data for all the companies that are in your spreadsheet. Now we need to talk a little bit about parameters and also I want to help you understand how the web query is constructed and the mechanics behind that. So if we go to the model sheet you will see the cells which we are using basically to drive the web queries and we can also go back to the filing sheet and have a look in more detail at the web query. Whoops. We go down to parameters. It will show us the parameters it's actually using and you will see that the token which I mentioned earlier and which I inserted earlier um, is coming from cell A1 which we know about and the company ID is coming from B1 for this particular sheet and the date is coming from A3. We'll go and have a look at those again in more detail. But I would also like you to see how the query is in effect constructed. There's another way to get at the parameters by going to the list of connections on the data room. And you will see that we have got a data connection for each of the sheets. So they've each got their own unique connection. And if we go to properties, we can look at it in more detail. If we go to the definition, we can actually see what the web query looks like. First part of it is the URL, and then we have the various parameters which determine which data actually gets pulled back. And again, as you can see, we can edit the parameters from here. And it's worth pointing out here that not only can you select a parameter by specifying a cell in which it's located, you can also, for example, get it to prompt you for each of the parameters that you need in order to build your web query. So if we 
go back to the model tab we can start changing the parameters to see how the data changes so for example if we go here and this is cell B1 that's the cell which um, the query on the first filing page is referring to in terms of picking up a particular company. So if we change this from Microsoft to Google, so we put in the ticket G00G, um, and we rerun the query, so we go back to their filing sheet, and right click it, and click on refresh. Again, we can see it whirring away then um, this data from Microsoft will be released from data from Google. And as we can see over here, um, it's now changed to data from Google. So we can basically set up uh, parameters which refer to particular cells, uh, enabling us to very easily change which companies come down. It also picks up the tokens I mentioned before. Um, this piece of information you need to get from the website and it is valid for one day. This here is the date and what I've done in this particular spreadsheet is I have set it to the latest date. Basically it always shows the latest date. Um, with the latest date as a parameter what it does is basically download the latest report for any company. Um, when I say latest report you um, in the query distinguish between um, 10 K's and 10 Q's and this particular query is set up to receive 10 K's so it will always give you the latest 10 K's so if we go to the query we will see that that is one of the parameters there we go is the period there we go set as a3 and if we want to change the date range properties for the query we will see that we can control how often the refresh takes place or when it takes place so for example we could set it so it refreshes it whenever we open the file with the date set as it is, what that would mean is that whenever there was a new 10K in this instance for the particular company in question, it will automatically download the latest version and therefore you will always see the latest available information for that particular filer. So that's quite a useful little feature. Yep, yeah, um, there's probably quite a few other things to say about uh, web queries, but I just wanted to give you sort of an overview of how it works within this particular sheet and also give you an idea of how it's constructed. So if you were thinking about customizing it, you would have a, an idea of where to start. Thank you very much for uh, listening and watching, and um, I'm sure we will be producing some more videos along these lines in the near future.